What's going on you guys? It's Scott from Fly Rides. I am here today with the most handsome man in e-bikes, Hector Salcedo. We're going to be talking to you guys about some electric bike FAQs because I'll tell you what, we sure get a lot of questions from you guys and while we think you're all your own individual flowers and we love you individually, a lot of you individual flowers have a lot of the same question. So we're going to break down some of the questions that we get the most from you guys uh, and we're going to do it with an expert Name Hector. What's up? How's it going? Nothing much, man. Cool. Just, yeah. Just another day. Just, Just another, another day. day. Thanks for having me here, man. Of course, man. Thank so you cool. for being here. Oh my God! Wow. No, stop, stop. I didn't write that in. I am also going to give you guys some time codes below, so that basically you can just go down to that pin comment, press on the time code, and you can see if your question was answered. We'll break it down question by question. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Fly Rides Electric Bikes channel so that you can stay up to date on all things electric bikes, especially in the United States. In these United States, Fly Rides, come on, we're the number one EMTB electric bike channel. You guys know it. That's why you're watching. Brag! Let's break into the video. Goodbye. So I would say this is the question we maybe get the most. Hector, I'm going to ask you, how many miles will I get from a single charge? Well, it depends. So it really depends if you have a 400 watt hour, 500 watt hour, 625 watt hour, or up to a 700 watt hour battery pack. Ultimately, you're going to be getting at least about 20 to 25 miles an hour, or 20 to 25 miles per charge on that 400 watt hour battery pack. Ultimately, for every 100 watt hours, you're looking at about 10 miles of riding. Cool. So I mean, that's uh, I think that's a pretty good stat. I was actually not expecting that uh, something that clear. <laughs> so every 100 watt hours, an extra 10 miles. I love that. I think that's great. Yeah. Of course, it's also going to vary based on weight and size. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep in mind that uh, it depends on what level you're going to be on. So if you're on turbo mode or the highest torque mode the whole entire time, your mileage will go down about five to 10 miles. Uh, so if ultimately if you have a 700 watt hour battery pack and you're always on that turbo, probably going to be down to about 50, 45 miles. Definitely want to shout out also the Mission Control app from Specialized is a good way to track your range and also the Bosch uh, e-bike calculator, the, mm -hmm. uh, the battery calculator is great in terms of before you buy your e-bike, seeing how much you at your weight and the type of riding you do can expect. Let's pop into the next question if you're ready to go. Let's roll. Sweet. So next I want to know how long in miles or years can I expect out of my motor and battery? So motor and battery, again, it depends on what motor system you have. Some motor systems out there like Bosch will tell you right off the bat that you're guaranteed about a thousand cycles. So you're ultimately looking at thousands of miles. It's really hard to dictate exactly ex uh, how many miles you're gonna get per motor system, but ultimately about 5,000 miles would be a really safe uh, number that you can hit uh, before you start experiencing any issues, if you get any issues. We have ha some customers that have up to 8,000 miles already on their Bosch systems, not a problem at all. Uh, ultimately, uh, mo the lesser the battery system, the lesser known the battery system, the less information you'll know and the less we'll know about how many miles you're gonna get per that charge or as a lifetime. So ultimately get a system that has a Bosch, a Yamaha, Shimano, um, Broza system that you can rely on, that you can get a lot more miles out of. Reputable brands are definitely gonna get you a lot farther out on the roads for sure. Cool, so the next question I have for you is how fast do electric bikes go? So there are technically three classes of electric bikes out there. Class one is 20 miles an hour. Class two is throttled at 20 miles an hour. And then finally class three, pedal assist is 28 miles an hour. So by law, the, by those classes, 28 miles an hour is gonna be as fast as you can go. Most mountain bikes though will be uh, topping off at a class one, 20 miles an hour. How do I know I, like what class it's gonna be? Like where can I find that info? Gotcha. So most of that information you can find online on our website per product uh, category. You can also find it, sometimes it's etched, stamped, or even there's a sticker on your frame itself that has which class of uh, bike that you have. So I think we get this next question quite a bit because of hybrid vehicles and also electric vehicles coming out. Um, and that's the question is, do e-bikes offer regenerative braking right now? So right now with mid-drive motors, no. Um, the main reason for that is just there truly isn't an efficient way to recharge that battery. You are gonna need a lot more voltage or a lot more power coming out 
from your wheels, or let's say you hook it up to your hub and try to generate ro that rotation back to the battery. There just really isn't that much good technology available just yet. I'm sure the big guys are working on them uh, just because it is something that most people want. You want to be able to travel further away and uh, enjoy your e-bike more, but right now there really isn't a, a good way of regenerating that, uh, that battery. Fair enough. Uh, keeping all that in mind, so uh, how easy it, is it to charge an e-bike? Is it like a washer hookup? What am I having to plug into? How long is it going to take? All Got that it. stuff. Right. So typically it's just kind of like a laptop battery charger uh, that you'll connect directly to a wall. Try not to use a multi-strip because sometimes you do just need a, that little bit uh, higher rated electrical outlet uh, to get that power going into the battery. Um, depends on what charger you have. More, most of the chargers out there are four amp chargers that'll get you get a 500 watt hour battery charge in about four and a half hours. Uh, so if you have a two amp charger with a 700 watt hour battery pack, it could take you up to eight hours. So just keep in mind what type of charger you have. The higher the amps, the faster your charge. So keeping with the theme of batteries then, is there anything I need to do special to take care of this battery? I know Apple products, they have specific things they want you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, anything specific to our e-bikes that we need to be doing? Got it. So right now, again, most battery charges between three and five hours. So just keeping them in a cool uh, space away from direct sunlight will help them out in the longevity uh, or in the long term. Uh, if you are going to go on vacation or travel and be away from your bike and not use it for over a couple of weeks, maybe even months, make sure that it is charged up to 100%. You hear it now and then, oh, don't charge it up to 100%, charge it to 80%. These are all the batteries that we carry here have a battery management system chips in all the batteries, which keeps track of all the cells. So if you're leaving it charged at like 10%, by the time you get back from your break, it might be completely dead. So, and then you, don't want, you want to avoid that warranty <laughs> claim uh, with your uh, motor system. So ultimately, if you're gonna leave it away or be away, store it fully charged at 100%. And just keep in mind that after it charges, unplug it. Uh, if you need to leave it on a, a timer, but uh, make sure that it is unplugged because in the long run, you want to treat the battery like if it's a baby, you know, just be really calm and kind to it. I always unplug my baby before I leave it in the garage. Yes. <laughs> uh, battery management systems too. Another, uh, another good thing about buying a higher quality bike. Um, it's going to be, it's just a better system overall. You're mm -hmm. spending more, but you're also getting a lot more out of it. So there's special things obviously I need to do to take care of the battery, but in terms of the bike itself, like mm -hmm. what do I need to, what's different than a regular bike? What do I need to do to maintain this bike and service it and all that? Right, so right off the bat from a regular bicycle, drivetrain, keep your you know, chain clean, keep your cassette clean. Uh, most of these bikes are one by system, so keep that chain ring clean as well. And then for the brakes, you wanna make sure to take an alcohol swab to the rotor, just so that you can make sure that they're nice and tacky so you can actually stop and not skid or hear that loud whining while you're slowing down. That's regular bikes. E-bikes, ultimately, you just don't wanna pressure wash anything. Uh, a couple, uh, a bucket of soap and water and a sponge will do a long way to cleaning off the, what grime builds up on the motor or on the battery pack itself or even on the display. Uh, ultimately, you would wanna take your bike into the shop at least once a year uh, to get a software update, Bosch, uh, Shimano, uh, and anything like Broza, they do have up, um, periodic updates. So you wanna make sure that you're motor system and battery system and the display itself uh, is up to date uh, at least once a year. Cool. So basically just the stuff you would do on a regular bike and then a couple additional things. Uh, not too, too much though. Mm -hmm. That's why, uh, again, buy those advanced systems because they will uh, keep you out of the shop a little bit more. Definitely. Um, let's pivot away from uh, batteries and motors and stuff like that. Yeah. A little bit more broad question for you, okay? Uh, how much should I be looking to spend on an electric? So it really depends on your budget, but you can get a truly good bike, you know, from $2,000 and up. Uh, ultimately, you do want to get a mid-drive motor and not just because we carry them, but we've gone through the gamut of tons of hub drive motors that we know uh, and have gone pretty much belly up. A lot of them uh, in the market don't are, are no longer servicing hub motors. So mid-drive motors are the future. They're here. So stick to that. And yeah, you are gonna pay a little bit more, but you can pretty much get a solid mountain bike, whether it's a hardtail or a full suspension uh, from $3,500 and up from there. And this is a bike that yes, is a big investment, but it's gonna last you and you get what you pay for ultimately. And these things, I mean, they're 
awesome. You can't go wrong right now with the mid-drive motor system uh, from many of the manufacturers out there. Cool. Um, and then I guess uh, this is definitely, this is probably actually the most asked question I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, what size e-bike do I need to get? Just kidding, I'm gonna answer that question right now. Go watch our video on e-bike sizing <laughs> that we did like a couple weeks ago. You guys should be watching something like that to figure out your e-bike size. It's pretty detailed, it is pretty thorough. We did all the major manufacturers, the way they size bikes. So go check out our electric bike sizing video if you want that question answered because it is a 16 minute answer that I yeah. believe that video was. It's, so thorough. it's, it's thorough. a long, long answer. But I do wanna ask you, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of e-bike should I be getting? Not me specifically, but the Royal Eye. The Royal Eye. <laughs> so get something, ultimately, if you really need an e-bike and you're looking to do longer distances, get something that's comfortable. You are gonna be on the saddle more often than you would be on a regular bicycle. Let's say you're tr uh, trying to climb, most people stand up off of their seats because they need that extra torque. On an e-bike, the torque is the motor that's giving it to you, so you're gonna be seated a lot more often. So I would say get a comfortable bike. If you're gonna be mountain biking, uh, get something that has uh, at least 140 millimeters of travel, uh, just because you are gonna go through that travel as it is a heavier bicycle. If you're gonna be commuting, again, get something that's fast, typically a class three. Uh, you can get away with class ones if you're just gonna be putting around town, but class threes are my favorite for commuting on. And again, something that's comfortable and upright for you. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. Hector, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. He's yeah. a busy man, so give him a hand uh, in your home office, <laughs> wherever you are right now. Like this video, you guys. Again, please, once again, subscribe to this channel. Honestly, for your own good, subscribe to the Fly Rides Electric Bike channel because we are going to be keeping you up to date all the time, at least once a week, and sometimes even more. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.